Today we're gonna to answer all the questions we get from young people. Guys and girls are taking shop class, they're finding our videos, which is really cool, but they got a lot of specific questions that we haven't addressed yet. So here's the video for you. So stick around, even you boomers can learn a new thing or two. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. All right, so we have five things up here. Let's see what the first one is. I don't wanna come off as sleazy. Yeah, that's probably the number one thing we hear from young people. Okay, so most of the people who ask us this question picture salespeople as a guy holding a briefcase, going door to door trying to sell people things in the middle of dinner. Or a used car salesman trying to sell you a really terrible car that they know is gonna break down two miles down the highway. But the kind of person that's worried about being that person is not gonna do those things. So don't carry your own personal negative connotation into sales. Sales is just helping people find the right thing, but not forcing them. Sales is helping, not forcing. Helping, not forcing. And if it's done correctly, it's a super fun experience for both the seller and the buyer. Have you ever bought a product from or like advertised by a YouTuber or a streamer? You got a product that helped you out, they got a little bit of a kickback, it helped them, everybody benefited, that's sales. I remember when I was a kid, I was doing a walkathon. It's a fundraiser where I walk laps around a track and adults would pay me for every lap I walked and all the money would basically go to some fundraiser. I was shocked that these adults were paying me $20 per lap. I was thinking in my head, I wouldn't give $20, but all these people were giving a minimum of $5 for every lap I walked around the track and they weren't getting anything out of it. All the money was literally going straight to a fundraiser. But now I realize that people just have a soft spot for kids. That's why the school has you do the fundraisers instead of the teachers. Cause the teachers can barely sell you on taking a test. All right, number two, let's see what it is. How much do I charge? I lied. This is the one we get more. We get this more than number one. People are always asking us, how much do I charge? All right, so pricing. This is our number one question from grownups. It's also our number one question from younger people. How much do I charge for my stuff? And our answer is charge whatever you want. Charge as high as you can possibly think people would pay for something. If you're under the age of 25, you're in a really special spot because older people love to support young people. They want better for the younger generations. They feel good about it. It's just it, it's just a thing that we do as human beings is older people really like to help younger people. I remember in our old neighborhood, the kids across the street used to do a lemonade stand every summer. And it's just like every lemonade stand that you're thinking about or that you've seen before. It's a little table out in the front yard. They get a little poster board sign that says like 25 Five cents a cup and they got two big pictures from the kitchen so we'd always go buy a couple of cups and we'd pay them like five bucks or ten bucks you know one day we went over there and it was really windy and they were keeping all their money in like a little cup well the cup fell over and oh my gosh these kids were rolling in it I'm talking to tens and twenties blowing all over the front yard. We were helping them pick up the money, but they must have had $200 in that cup. They were making so much more than 25 cents a cup. What I'm trying to get y'all to understand is that price does not matter. It's completely arbitrary. Their sign may have well said free lemonade, but they were still gonna make a ton of money. So if their price is not important, your price is not important. So why not give them a big price? The people that are gonna complain about your prices are the same people that would have complained about 25 cents a cup. They would have complained, oh, well last year it was 15 cents a cup. People are gonna complain about price no matter what you price it. You might as well give them something to complain about. And the people that are gonna pay it are gonna pay it anyway. And the people that are gonna complain are gonna complain no matter what your price is. So give them something to complain about. Price really high. People are more than willing to pay you for your work. All you gotta do is ask for it because your customers are the ones that will pay for it. So if somebody doesn't wanna pay it, that's fine. You're not trying to build anything for them. All right, number three. It's a good one. Boop. Is my work good enough to sell? We get this question all the time. People will send us Instagram messages with pictures of their work and say, hey, is this good enough for me to sell to somebody? Short answer, 
Yes, as long as it's not falling apart, it's good enough to sell. And actually, what we found out is it's not about the product. So when I was a kid, our fridge was littered with paintings and drawings that my sister and I made. Maybe you had the same experience. So they were the most terrible, ugly looking drawings, but dang it, they were on the fridge. My dad still, to this day, still has some of those pictures that I drew in his office. They're, I mean, the, the clouds look like butterflies, really terrible looking stick figures, and every word in the caption is like completely misspelled. When you're younger and making stuff, People expect it to be bad. They're tempering their expectations because they know that you're younger, which then that makes it really easy to wow them. Their jaw is gonna hit the floor when they see how nice of work that you make. So if you're really struggling with self-confidence and not believing that your stuff is really high quality, again, as long as it's not falling apart, it's good enough to sell. So you can really blow their socks off whenever you show up with something that does look professionally made. Of course, you can always get better, you can learn more skills you can improve but that is no reason to delay starting your business because you're gonna learn so much more so much faster than if you wait longer to start all right number four let's get it Ooh, your story is greater than your product we had to learn this the hard way we kept on wanting to make an even better product they're buying your story you can always improve your product but you need to spend time Improving your storytelling abilities because people buy your story, not necessarily your products. All right, let's talk about streamers. Think right now of your favorite streamer. They're selling their story, their grind, entertainment, not just educational or informative content. It doesn't matter what game they're playing, you're just excited to watch what they're doing and how they do it. When they get donos or sponsorships, we're excited for them because it's part of their story. Supporting them isn't necessarily about the games, it's about the person. And that's exactly why people will buy from you. People are gonna buy the idea of you and your business. They're not gonna go comparing what you build against something that a master craftsman has made. They're buying into the idea of you building a business years from now. And then they can say, I bought from that kid back when he lived across the street from me. You guys don't understand the power that you have in running a business the next five years as a young person. So spend some time outlining your story of how you got into woodworking or building. Maybe it's you started taking shop classes in high school or you learned from your grandpa when you were young. Get that story nailed down and that's gonna sell you more product than anything else. And the last one. Number five. Be fair, do the right thing for not only others, but yourself. Okay, so when it comes to other people, treat them fairly. Most people get this and do it right most of the time. Be honest, don't lie to the customer, own your own mistakes if you make them. But one thing most people miss is don't be greedy. If somebody else in your town sells a piece of furniture, be happy for them. You're all on the same team. You are trying to sell and make money and do good things. Don't be greedy with your money or jealous that other people, you know, are doing it out there too. There's more than enough money going around for more than one person to build furniture. And for the other part of this, treat yourself fairly. This is where we've got a little bit of learning to do. So we get a lot of messages from people with low self-confidence that just aren't being fair to themselves. So one time when I was in high school, after a student council fundraiser, I was supposed to go out with a couple other people and buy a ton of decorations for a dance that was coming up. And this was gonna be a huge dance. Everybody was so excited. It was gonna be a big production. We raised a ton of money. Everybody was really excited for this dance. It was supposed to be big and awesome. So we were running all over town trying to get the best decorations. I'm talking like eight different stores across town and back like four different times. But before we left, my teacher had given us some the fundraiser money to use for lunch while we were gone all day and then like gas to fill up my gas tank and I thought that was kind of odd like all this money was supposed to be for these super cool decorations for everybody to enjoy the dance like who am I to spend money on like getting us lunch and, and gas when we were supposed to be throwing this amazing dance for everybody else so I just decided to skip lunch and use my own gas money so then the very next day the day of the dance I realized that I had no gas in my car and no money in my account to buy gas because I was too proud to take the gas money yesterday. So I called one of my friends to come pick me up and then we were both late to the very dance that 
we had worked so hard to put on. Not only did I end up hurting myself, I ended up screwing over more people than just myself. I had made my friend late to the dance for something that I had done wrong. So the moral of the story is you can't give to others when your tank is empty. You can give to way more people if you take care of yourself first. So what does that look like in a woodworking business? Pay yourself first. Give yourself a longer lead time for projects. Take a break if you need to, because nobody wants you to be unhappy. Your customers want to support you, they want you to be happy, and they don't want you to get burned out. So take care of yourself, do what you need to do, and you'll be able to make a ton more people happy. All right, so if you know anybody who's younger trying to start a woodworking business or something like that, or I guess anybody any age, um, and you think that these tips might help them, send them this video. Just send them an email, send them a text message, just share this video to them. Um, we'd love to get this video to as many young eyeballs as possible. Because one of the fastest ways to learn about yourself and to grow from that is to start a business when you're young. You're gonna be faced with things that you can run away from for decades before real life catches up with you. But if you start a business, you can learn these lessons a lot faster when you're young. It's tougher up front, but it's way better for you in the long run. I wish that I had started a business when I was younger so that I could have learned some of these things a little bit quicker. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hit that subscribe and the notification bell. You see all of our new videos when they come out. We're trying to run a woodworking business here in the Houston area, and we'd love for you to follow along and be with us on our journey. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the play.